Well, hello, hello, guys. You're listening to Beauty Bites with Dr. K, Secrets of a Plastic Surgeon. And today on the podcast, I have the gorgeous and fabulous Miss Nia Sanchez. Nia is a pageant participant who won the Miss USA contest in 2014. And she subsequently went on to participate representing the United States in the Miss Universe 2014 competition and placed first runner up. So welcome, Miss Beautiful Miss USA. How are you, Nia? I'm good. How are you doing today? So good. It's really exciting to podcast with you. So right now you're a model, lifestyle coach, an influencer, and a pageant coach. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. And I also teach women's self-defense workshops. So I would say the modeling was the former part of my career. I do a little more commercial acting, coaching, and then self-defense instructor as well. Wow. When did you pick up self-defense? Was that a skill you used during the pageants? I know, right? That would be really fun. Um, No, I actually started training in martial arts when I was eight years old. I've trained in three different martial arts over the span of two plus years. Um, I'm a fourth degree black belt and I'm now currently training in jujitsu. And if anybody knows jujitsu, they probably know the Gracie's. I'm training at Gracie University uh, here in California, which is one of like the top of the line jujitsu schools. And I really enjoy it. So my lifetime of martial arts transferred into teaching self-defense because I have a passion for women and helping women feel strong and empowered. So that's how I got into it. How exciting for a visual. This is like the most beautiful, petite, elegant, feminine woman that I'm looking at. Who's like, I'm a black belt. (laughs) I'm a fourth degree (laughs) black belt. (laughs) For those of you guys listening. Well, tell me a little bit about the whole experience of winning Miss USA in 2014. Was that such a life-changing moment for you? It was completely life-changing for sure. And it was something that completely turned my world upside down in the best way possible. So when you win Miss USA, the very next morning, they put you on a plane and fly you to New York City. Whatever clothes you had with you when you were competing for the two or three weeks are the only clothes you have. You're in New York City, but you also have a stylist and you do a full week of media. So it does flip your world upside down from just, I was living in a small town in Nevada. And then all of a sudden I'm in New York City, right across the street from Central Park. And it's just kind of a magical experience and I, I I loved it. It was so much fun. That sounds so glamorous. I mean, I grew up in the age where I watched every year the Miss USA, the Miss America contest, and I would love it. I sit there at night with my parents and watch it. And you know part of you aspires to be that. Do you think that young girls today still aspire to be pageant winners or still look forward to find out who's gonna win for Miss USA? I do. There's a lot of young girls of all different age ranges. Like I'll meet teenagers and even younger girls, preteens. And I think when it comes to the beauty pageant world, it's all about how they approach it and their, how their parents help them approach it as well. Because in the pageant world, there's the craziness of the like glam pageants at a young age where girls are taught that beauty is just what you look like. And I don't think that's healthy. Um, so there's, there's definitely little girls that look up to the pageant queens, but I think it's also important to have realistic expectations and that kind of starts at home, but we have girls of every age that are competing and hopefully one day wanting to get to the Miss USA stage. Yes. I think that the whole platform is changing so much, just like the Victoria's Secret and Sports Illustrated models have changed a lot. I think like Sports Illustrated did such a great job this year of inclusivity mm-hmm. where they have body conscious, heavier women, handicapped women, women of all races, ethnicities. It's so difficult. Like, how do we teach our daughters and our fellow women to get that inner confidence? I, I have that same dilemma in our specialty. I see these gorgeous girls come sit in my chair and they just tear apart their faces, like, oh, I hate my cheeks, I hate my jawline, I'm so ugly, this and that. And like, I just want to shake them like, you're so pretty. You have all these great features and I want to help them bring out their best features. But it's, I don't know how you teach confidence when we've raised generations of girls who are, I guess, women are practical. Like we kind of know that we are judged based on our looks. That is yeah, like, I got that's the hard, cold reality of life, right? Yeah. I can imagine how many people you see that are struggling with that on a regular basis in your job. Um, one of the things, there's a lot of things that I feel like we can do to really build our our confidence, but 
One of them is being very mentally aware of the voice that's in our head. And if we hear that negative voice to acknowledge it, so we recognize it, the first thing is to recognize those thoughts and see them for what they are. Are they reality or are they just a thought and an opinion? That doesn't necessarily make it real. It's just a thought, just an opinion. So once we first recognize them, see what they are, the reality or not, then if it's not a fact, if it's not reality, then we replace it with something positive. So it could be for me, I mean, I, my skin is doing really good right now, but typically I struggle with acne. So I could look at myself when I'm breaking out all over my cheeks and go, oh, I'm so ugly. And, I, and I've had that thought so many times because acne can be so damaging to your self-confidence and your self-love. But instead recognizing that is saying, hey, that's, first of all, that's an opinion. And that's a mean opinion towards myself. And then replacing it with positivity and saying, you know what? First and foremost, I'm, I love myself and I'm beautiful on the inside. That's what's most important. But acne is temporary. And so it does not mean that I'm ugly. So just replacing it with those positive thoughts. Um, and then beyond that affirmation, it's mm-hmm. kind of awkward sometimes if no one out like if someone listening out there has never spoken an affirmation to themselves, but saying positive things intentionally to yourself can really be life changing if you continue to do it over and over again. So those are two things. There's so many things, but those are two of them. That's very true. I think the voice, that inner voice that you speak to yourself with becomes your own, you're your own harshest critic. But mm-hmm. seriously, if you can't be nice to yourself, who in the world can be? You really have to like talk to yourself with a positive, upbeat, you know, nice voice. Um, your microphone is blaring just a little bit. So I don't know, just, I don't know, just maybe less head motion. But, Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> but these are all awesome. Um, women these days are getting so many things done to their faces, which is definitely mm-hmm. my, my area of expertise. And what do you think about your fellow pageant competitors? Do you feel like people are getting lookalike lips or they all have similar cheeks or nobody's forehead moves anymore? Everybody, <laughs> does everyone have boob implants these days? Is it getting to be like all, you know, the same kind of clone? When it comes to the pageant world, we have, I feel like most girls, at least in their 20s, have a little bit of something done. For sure in the Latin community, uh, if you go to Colombia, Mexico, Venezuela, those communities have been taught by national directors, especially in Venezuela that I know of, that beauty is created. And I don't necessarily align or agree with that. I'm just sharing a fact that I know of that that is what has been taught in a lot of those communities and countries. And so it is very common to see whatever it might be, whether it's liposuction or lip fillers or Botox or Dysport, you know, a little bit of something for sure is very common. Everything even to like getting their teeth done, veneers, uh, little details, like all little details kind of add up, especially in the Latin community. But when it comes to the U.S. and what I see in girls competing, I would say that there's at least like 60% of girls have had something done when they finally get to like the kind of top level of competing. Yeah, I think it's so prevalent. Los Angeles, of course, being the mecca of plastic surgery, (laughs) feels like everybody now, Botox is kind of the standard. It just seems like everyone doesn't bat an eye about Botox. But that's one of the things that I kind of wonder, you know, are we starting to see too much homogenization of our facial features where everyone has these plump, juicy one or two syringe lips? And um, are we going a little too far? But I think if we keep it natural, and I think if we just maintain aging changes, we're not likely to see clones if everybody has the same pair of lips and the same pair of boobs, hopefully. Exactly. We have to be able to celebrate the beauty that we have and not try to look like someone else. But I think you can celebrate your own beauty and still have little things done here and there without trying to replicate, you know, Kim K's face or so-and-so's face. I think you can still celebrate your own beauty. Definitely. How do you feel about the Kardashians going off the air? (laughs) Oh my goodness. I know. That's like, it's so funny. I feel like I grew up in my twenties watching them. Um, not all of the shows or seasons, but it's a, it's definitely a big change for anybody that watches their show. It's going to be weird not having them, but we'll still follow them on social media. So I'm sure all their children will get their own shows, right? Oh, of course. (laughs) Time for the next generation. But, um, yeah, they've definitely influenced beauty standards quite a lot. 
Um, mm -hmm. Just as Miss America and Miss USA have actually influenced beauty standards in this country for decades, you know, mm -hmm. for our moms for the 19... 60s, 70s, 80s, I think that was really the gold standard of what was beauty, right? Yeah, it's true. It definitely mm -hmm. is, Jeff definitely has morphed. Um, imagine if the Kardashians were running pageants, it would be like very oh interesting figure shapes and big butts. And <laughs> it would be crazy. I can only imagine. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> There's an idea for Kim if you're listening. <laughs> the next pageant. Um, well, tell us one thing that would surprise, sorry, let me say that again. Tell us something that will surprise our listeners about you. Sorry, can you say that one more time? It cut off for a second. Oh, sure. Tell us something that will surprise our listeners about you. Oh, our audience, is our, our Wi-Fi okay. glitching First of again? All, can you is tell the Wi-Fi glitching? Because it was a little slow. Yeah, I don't know why. My my Wi-Fi is good. Is yours still pretty good? Do you still have like your poor your should be great? Outers on this wall. Um so it should be pretty strong. I think Definitely are we back little, to normal? Uh, that feel, no, it still feels glitchy. Glitchy. It feels a little off. Yeah. Hold on. I can move to another location if it still feels off. Are we good? I think we're good now. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe if you stay lean back or something. Mm, I'm good right okay. now. Oh, we need to just in case. <laughs> Let's see. Say something it's else. Uh, I'm going to move one second. Yeah, I think it's still yeah. glitching quite a bit. Okay, yeah. let me move. And I'm going to switch internet. So it's going to take like two seconds. Won't fully disconnect us. One minute. Okay, sure. Okay. okay. Just dropping your signal, so she's going to move around. Any other questions that I'm missing? Anti-aging secrets. Okay. Still glitchy. Okay. Can How's you that? hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? You're frozen, but yes, I can hear you. As long as our audio is good, I feel like that's okay, most important. That's, this is, um, I can see you again. Can you see me? Am I moving? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. I think that's a much better spot. Okay, perfect. I think so. So tell the listeners okay. what? Um, tell me your anti-aging secrets. What's your beauty regimen and the, the must-do things that are in your list? Okay, I'm a little nervous because you're a professional, but I'm gonna tell you what I do. Maybe you can tell me if I do it right or not. Okay. Uh, some of the most important things for me is a double cleanse because I do wear makeup and I wanna make sure that all of it is off of my skin. And um, I'm actually following a very like regimented routine right now for kind of keeping my acne under control. So I have a, a serum medication ointment that I put on and then I always use like a good under eye cream. I apply with my fingertips. What's yes, it? ring Our, finger. Ring finger. There we there go. You go. Thank you. My ring finger. Um, but moisture and like keeping hydrated is number one for me. So internally with drinking tons of water all the time and then always making sure that my skin and especially my face and under eyes are moisturized, moisturized and hydrated because I feel like that's going to help me stay young. Is that, am I kind of going in the right direction? You're, what do you've you think? You've got it. Yes. As long as you add some sunscreen, some vitamin C, antioxidant, and hopefully you're on a Retin-A product because that'll help mature the oil glands that are giving you breakouts. So you have to yeah. try my Diamond Line Refine. I'm going to send you some of that. And our acne Ooh. pads are awesome too, actually. I'm so excited. I'm ready to try it. And yes, sunscreen is something that I swear by, and I'm sure all of your listeners already know about, but I deal with melasma and like sun sunspots on my face. So I am layered up in sunscreen and I put zinc actually over my spots of melasma just to make sure that I'm extra protected. I always wear a hat, a wide brimmed hat, like one of those big old sun hats. So yeah. I do everything I can to try to protect my skin. I love that. Yes. And mineral sunscreens are the best for melasma patients. So that's like my okay. 
the highest concentration of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. So it's like the light surfer sunscreen, but it's tinted and very pleasant. So definitely mineral sunscreens. And you can definitely try my bleaching pads too for lightening any brown spots. So oh, I have that in whole, my life. <laughs> a whole package of goodies for you. <laughs> I love it. Well, this is one of the first times that women are so transparent with what they're doing with their faces. I know that you've done some injectables and you're maintaining your beauty. And I love that you talk about it because as Miss mm -hmm. USA and former Miss Universe pageant participant, like you know the importance of maintaining attractiveness and investing in your best asset, which is yourself. So what exactly. have you done? What are you open to telling us about? I'm always open to talking about anything and everything. So actually when I first started competing at a higher level after I won Miss Nevada USA and was getting ready for Miss USA was the first time that I did Dysport for forehead wrinkles and for the crow's feet. And that was something that I was actually really nervous to do because I was 24 years old and I thought to myself, I am way too young for this, but my director, was really positive and encouraging. And she said, nope, this is just preventative and we're going to do just a little bit. So she kind of went with me to my first doctor's appointment to make sure that I wasn't completely frozen. So that when it comes to forehead and crow's feet and then a little bit in my lips as well for filler, just to kind of get back my youthful volume, I gotta say, I have a little more volume when I was 22 versus now at 30. Yeah, every 10 years you lose about 10% of your lip volume. So it's nice to maintain. But um, exactly. I love that you're transparent about it and you're so beautiful. You look just really refreshed, very natural. But it's these small steps that we do that maintain our confidence and our attractiveness. Isn't yeah, that right? I agree. <laughs> Definitely. Um, well, how, how did it feel to get first runner up for Miss Universe? I've always wondered if you're the girl standing up there and they're about to call a name, like how does that actual moment feel if you're first runner up? Oh, yeah, it was a crazy moment because my life could again completely change for the good if I were to win Miss Universe in a different way but also I knew that I was very blessed and in a great position already being Miss USA so standing in top two I actually knew the announcer the host so I was looking at him and just thinking like my name is on the card my name I'm about to win Miss Universe I really oh, thought it was gonna happen yeah positive <laughs> uh, so voice a, yep I, exactly. I had that positive voice real strong in my head, but um, it was, it was a big letdown in the moment and now I'm okay with it. I would say it took a few years to finally just release the what if kind of yeah. questions. What if I had one, what would my life have looked like? But I do truly believe that everything happens for a reason. And although I was disappointed, like I was able to get married to my husband, my now husband a little bit sooner than I would have been able to get married because you can't be married while you're a title holder. Um, yeah. So everything works out and I've been very blessed to travel the world even without the title of Miss Universe. Okay. One of the reasons I wanted to win was I love travel and Miss Universe travels all over the world representing different organizations and charities and giving back to communities and I was so excited for that but I've been able to do that on my own which has still been really great so. That's it's awesome. okay. <laughs> yeah. That's one of those things where like, I'm, you guys keep like this game face on where I would be like, ah, what? <laughs> but you know, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. kudos to you. You're right. Life takes us in directions that we're meant to go. And exactly. you, you have been a really great role model for women of all ages. So I hope you continue your mission of educating and teaching self-defense, which is so awesome and coaching women for their confidence skills. So Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us on the podcast today. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Where can people find Absolutely. you on your Instagram account or other locations? Real Mia Sanchez across the board, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all the places, YouTube. You can find me anywhere. Real Mia Sanchez. We'll be sure to link it in our bio for the podcast. You guys should go check her out and um, you have to come visit me. You live in Los Angeles. I'm so close. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to bring you over to the office and we can always do like a little light pretty peel to get rid of pigmentation or brown spots mm -hmm. at the end of summer is perfect. I always do perfect. peels at the end of each season to get rid of summer sunspots and just kind of mm -hmm. boot, boot camp for the skin. And you can I'm coming me. in. I can't wait. <laughs> yes. You're going to teach me how to like do a backflip on an assailant. 
<laughs> self-defense. Oh, yeah. Well, I will teach you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks for so much for tuning in. Let me say that again. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. You've been listening to Beauty Bites with Dr. K, Secrets of a Plastic Surgeon, and thank you to the beautiful Miss USA, Mia Sanchez, 2014. We loved having you. You can find me on my Instagram at Beauty by Dr. K, doing amazing things with people's faces. And don't forget to check out our website where we have all that awesome skincare, beautybydrk.com for those bleaching pads, sunscreen, all the things all the good things that's it for now guys stay beautiful and confident and use your positive good voice bye yeah. ladies <laughs> bye